Amen. Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is God. Know that know he the Lord is God, and he has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. His truth endure for all generations. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Father, as we enter in now into your presence, Lord, we enter into your presence with thanksgiving to your courts with praise for we are thankful for you and Lord we come this evening to bless your name for you are good you're good Father and you're perfect in all of your ways and Lord we just want to take time out tonight just to thank you thank you for salvation Thank you for grace and thank you for mercy. Thank you for not cutting us off in the midst of our sins. Thank you for that hope that's in Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight. And Lord, we're here to express our gratitude, express our love to you, Lord. Lord, we pray that as we worship, that you would inhabit the praise of your people that the spirit of the living God will reside with us and sup with us and Lord as we pour out our heart to you in praise Lord you are worthy of every word you are worthy of every praise we are worthy of every hallelujah Lord, you, I ask you just to stir up our spirit, Lord, that we may get a glimpse of all you've done for us, all you've provided for us, all the times you healed us, all the times you set us free, all the time you put us back on the right track, all the time that you had mercy on us. Lord, we pray that our ears may be open to hear your word tonight. And our heart will be receptive to your presence. Lord, make us sensitive for your spirit on this evening. Let us hear your voice. whispers to us. We love you, Lord. Help us express the love we have for you. Help us magnify you. Help us glorify you. Lord, we're grateful for you. And we love you, God. Anoint us to sing praises to you that we may touch the hem of your garment tonight in the name of Jesus we pray amen and amen stand with us if you would tonight as we begin to worship the Lord in song just lift your voices up to him he's worthy amen
God. You are my everything, Lord. Is it your everything? Say you're my everything, God. You're worthy of my praise tonight. Can you just say that to him? Oh, do you know Jehovah? He sits high upon his throne. Oh, do you know Jehovah? He sits high upon his throne. He reigns in power. I said he reigns in power. And he is God alone. Jehovah God, mighty on his throne. praise the Lord is always an action involved did you know that if you didn't do now it's an action involved and you know it kind of makes you feel silly when you're to dance around in victory but you know you don't have to dance around a big old circle let's just show some love and some happiness can we do that some joy in our heart as we sing that one more time remember as we said last week we put our music where our mouth is amen oh some praise him with your hands lifted high, come on and praise Him, and lift Him up to the sky. Oh, now praise Him, and dance around in victory. Lord, now praise Him, we'll stomp and praise Him with our feet. Praise the Lord with passion, and praise Him with your mouth, for He is God Almighty, and He rises with a shout, so praise Him. Somebody give Him a praise tonight. Man, let's give him another hand clap of praise. You can do a little better than that. Amen. He is worthy of all praise. Amen. Glory. We have your seats in the house of the Lord. I want to welcome everyone to our midweek service here at Harvest Christian Center. Do we have any uh, first time guests or any first timers in Wednesday night service? Amen. Let's see our first timers there in our Wednesday night service. Amen. Uh, it should be a, if you're here, uh, you have a, anybody got a welcome uh, packet? They got it on Sunday? Well, we are glad you are back. Amen. We thank God for you. Um, for our announcements uh, this evening, we're going to do something a little different. It's something that we used to do uh, some years ago, but it is a blessing to me. It is uh, announcements on video with, so, uh, with a voiceover. So I'm gonna, gonna uh, have them to play the announcement video and then I'll come back and we'll receive our tithe and offering. Amen. Visitation ministry, nursing home afternoon visitation ministry this Friday at Specialty Care Center. Meet at 3.55 p.m. in the lobby. Room to room visitation starts at 4 p.m. See Todd or Susie Obert. Youth service this Sunday. Pastor Derek will be preaching and the youth will be leading the service. Make plans to be here and show them your support. Youth spaghetti fundraiser. Plan to pick up a carryout plate after service this Sunday, March 18th. $5 a plate includes spaghetti, rolls, and dessert. 
Strike the Ground, a night of preaching and praise, Friday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. All women, all ages invited. Our speaker will be Robbie Hodge, and praise will be led by Debbie Fleming. Discipleship Now Fools will be April 6th through 8th. Money is due March 21st. They will be staying at a cabin at Adventures Unlimited. Cost will be $45 for one person and $30 if you bring a friend. Meals are included. If you have any questions, speak with Pastor Derek. See your worship guide for additional announcements and other information. All right, let's give it up. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Jennifer is a lifesaver. Amen. <laughs> that is wonderful. Amen. That is a blessing. Let's, let's make ready to receive our tithe and offering tonight. I don't want to prolong the time. I don't want to rush the word. How many was here last Wednesday? Did y'all enjoy that word? Yes. Yes. Amen. I've been getting comments on that all last week and this week. That is an awesome, was an awesome word, awesome speaker. I told her in the beginning of the service, she did so well, she got the whole month of April to speak. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't think that was funny, though. <laughs> I mean, our offering scripture uh, tonight is Philippians 4.19, and it says, My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you for who you are, God. Someone that has unlimited resources the heart as a king is in your hand and you can turn it any way you would like you have many ways that you can bless us many ways you can bless harvest many ways you can bless the least of these and Lord we just thank you now and Lord we pray that what we give on tonight will meet the needs of your ministry here at harvest meet the needs of those that will come and need help and be able to pay every bill and, and be able to help someone else in your name. And Lord, we ask you to bless this offering now in the mighty name of Jesus. And let everyone say amen, amen, amen. After you've given and after the uh, offering basket pass you by, we'll have one last praise song. And then after that praise song, the next voice you will hear will be Pastor Fred that will be bringing us to work tonight. Praise Him with your hands lifted high. Come on and praise Him and lift Him up to the sky. What oh, the praise Him and dance around in victory. What oh, the praise Him. We we'll stop and praise Him with our feet. Praise the Lord with passion and praise Him with your mouth. For He is God Almighty and He rises with a shout. So praise Him with your hands lifted high. Come on and praise Him. of a praise to him tonight. Hallelujah. Pastor Fred. Y'all give the praise team and, and those praise team out here too. I can't clap. Right? <laughs> Amen. And the musicians. Thank you folks for playing and singing. Sir. Well, we can do that still. <laughs> Pastor John said we should have given you an opportunity to greet people. So uh, turn to somebody and say hello. All right. Amen. Amen. It's good to be back in cantonment. Amen. It's good. It's good. I was, I was going to uh, share some of Israel, and I will. We'll talk a little bit, but I had a, a map for everybody. But I want to. I want to do this in a good way, 
and I had problems w uh, with getting things up like we needed to in time, and uh, nobody's fault but my own. But um, I, wanted, I wanted it to be a good presentation with pictures that you can see, and so I'm going to let you wait. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if you have a map in your... Uh, if you have if you have a map in in your Bible, you can look at it though and see where Israel is. I tell you, let let's. I will pass these out. I don't have enough for everybody, so just uh, take take a you know. There's about 20 there, so we have a few more folks than 20. But I still probably got a little bit of jet lag. It was a 12-hour trip over there, and 12 hours back, and I didn't get much uh, sleep while I was there either. It was just a lot of excitement. Now, I did get some. Anybody know what this is called? A hat. That's right. It is a hat. A, a beanie. Uh, uh, the Israelis call them yarmulkes. I bought this because it was cheap and, and because, and because uh, my grandson likes to wear hats. No, it was cheap. It was, it's, cheap. it's cheaply made and it's cheap. But, uh, but uh, they wear these over there. A lot of folks do. A lot of guys... I was all dressed up even tonight. I didn't do it on purpose. It's it's about the only thing I had clean, but uh, but uh, they do wear a lot of black and white. So I would have really been, I would have really been in good shape uh, tonight. I mean, decoration wise. Yeah, they got some beards. Some of them have curls. Uh, some guys. Have, I'm making fun of them. Some they're like different groups. Like you have Baptist and Methodist, and but we don't dress differently. I don't guess. In our different denominations, but um, but they do. They have little things about them. On on in their clothes, the Orthodox do that set them apart from one another. Some might be learning after one rabbi or one group of rabbis, and so they might have a little bit different. You know, their coat might be a little longer. Uh, their trousers a little different. Um, I even now the, now the girls don't wear wear these. But I got uh, one of these for Edie because if I'd got one for Will and didn't get one for Edie, I'd have been in trouble. But they wear different types of these uh, yarmulkes. It's just really a sign of maturity when a when a boy gets to about ten years old, he gets to wear one of these, and, um, and a lot of times it, it is a sign of a uh, of maturity of, of growing up and, and being a a Jewish little boy. As people become rabbis, they, they wear a hat. It's a round hat. They even have hat boxes for their hats. Uh, I did, we're not going to talk about Israel, but I want to talk a little bit about it. I did, uh, I did uh, engage some with some rabbis, uh, a couple, not many, because they're doing their own thing. And, and the Orthodox, uh, sometimes in that part of Jerusalem, um, just the, um, I, I'm, I'm sure they would be willing if I engaged them, but the, the way I got to talk to Rabbi Jacob uh, Samuel Friedler in New York uh, was to ask him, is that a good chicken sandwich you're eating? <laughs> <laughs> and that opened a conversation with him. And he told me he's a retired rabbi, uh, but he still had the garb on, he still had the clothes on. And so I... I just inquired a little farther, and uh, he told me well, he was selling real estate now, and uh, and that's you know that's fine too. Uh, we talked a little, and I told him about the flower shop, and we we got to talking about retail business and uh, about the Lord a little bit. We're always going to come around to uh, talking about God and Jesus when we get an opportunity. I don't know, you may have a question, since I don't have a presentation tonight, uh, about anything that I, I don't know that I could answer it. I don't know that I could answer it, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, it's something that you've wondered about the Holy Land. This is my first trip, and I don't know it all, but I learned a whole lot and really came to appreciate the land we call the Holy Land. Awesome. Awesome land. Um, about 8,000 square miles, about the size of the state of New Jersey. 
our um, own state, you could fit about eight Israels in the state of Florida, square miles tight. Uh, there are um, eight million people in the country, uh, probably going toward nine now. Two million in Jerusalem. But 10 million tourists come, come about every year now. More, more tourists come to the land than there are even citizens of Israel. Uh, on your map there, if you'll see a lighter part, we'll tell you where we flew into. Anybody want to take a guess? We flew into Tel Aviv. Israel is very technological. It's very agricultural, but it's very high-tech. Uh, Tel Aviv is like a, a modern city in the U.S. Cars, um, buses, planes the finest motels. We didn't stay there at night. We went up a little ways north uh, toward Haifa and stayed uh, at a place called Hadera. Really nice place on the Mediterranean. I mean, you could look out my eighth floor room and see the Mediterranean, just beautiful. And um, Anyway, a lot, a lot of wonderful, wonderful things happened. I think the main thing probably with me was just connecting with individuals while I was there. I really enjoyed the holy sites. We went to all of them, or to a lot of them, <laughs> not all of them. But we went to a lot of holy sites, the places that we think about. Some places, I'll have to say this, some places... The, the spot where it really happened and uh, the person that has that spot says that's the only spot that ha that it happened at but we don't know <laughs> uh, for instance the wedding at Cana of Galilee we went to the wedding at Cana of Galilee and there were probably four other places around there that were was the spot of the wedding but uh, don't know they built the new by the old. And they're always excavating. Can't excavate everything. But you remember the, the Romans leveled in 70 AD. They leveled the whole. Jesus said one stone's not going to be left on another. And that's truly really the way it was. So they built another city on top of that during the Byzantine Empire. And, and, and even in, during the Crusades. And, and as we go along in history, other things have been built there. But they've dug down and find things and lets them know that they find money or they find some inscriptions and that uh, it lets them know that this is this is a spot and there's some places for certain you can say that. Um, they built a lot of churches over holy sites. The Catholic Church has done that and over the years they've really been a blessing to the land in that they've helped to preserve and helped to excavate. But y'all, I'll tell you, it's, it's amazing. The scripture says that the desert's going to blossom like a rose, and it really does. And I'd never seen date palms like, like grow over there. And the food uh, was really, really, really good. How many of you have been to Israel? Anybody yet? Wow. Maybe we can go. We're going, Carolyn said she's going to wait and go to the New Jerusalem. She didn't care about flying in a plane. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the lighter area that you see there, I need to, uh, because we need to pray for the folks there especially. I need to just pray for all of Israel and for the pre peace of Jerusalem. But you see those areas, the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, Golan Heights. Those are places where... Um, there, there's there's just some tension a lot of time. Not many tours get to go to Bethlehem because it's in the Palestinian sector. We got to go to Bethlehem. We had to change our guides, though, because it's against the law. It's against the, the law and the land. And the Palestinians real, really hold the Israeli tight to this. But Israelis are not to go over to Palestine. And there's a sign there that said, if you are Israeli and you're in this territory, you're in danger of losing your life. They just said it printed out on the sign. 
And when I get a chance to show you some of these slides, you'll really appreciate the, I don't know, uh, the Israelis really believed do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And from what I saw, they were, they were very open. A lot of Arabs, Palestinians, Muslims in the darker green there. But probably if you were an Israeli, you wouldn't want to go into the lighter green, into the West Bank. We did go up as uh, we did go up above the Sea of Galilee that you see there. It wasn't even on our tour, but our 78-year-old pastor from one of our IPHC churches, John Hedgepeth, has been there 30 times, been to Israel 30 times, and the, the Ministry of Tourism wanted to put a plaque up for him. And, uh, and so they, we had a special little ceremony up in a little place right up above where the F is, and, and the Sea of Galilee, right above there. We stayed in Tiberias on the Gal Sea of Galilee, but right above there was a little place called Kir Kiryat Shimona. You can probably see it on your Bible map. I saw it on yours, Brother John. But, um, and we were up in, we were right up, we, we could look over in, into Lebanon, and we could look over into Syria from where we were. And the Golan Heights, of course, is a disputed area. I just want to say something to you, though, tonight that, that we need to know and that we are important to God. You as an individual are. That was driven home to me more and more as I was there. I think probably the greatest thing about the trip was the people that I got to go with. I was with some people out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, and a lot of them were connected to the 82nd Airborne. They were wives, husbands, some of them working, some of them maybe, on, maybe not even, even in country, but, uh, and some retired guys. Um, we had a lot of, they're not really very old because we're never too old. We had an 89-year-old fellow with us and his wife, and they were just a blessing. And I really did enjoy being with them with that couple he kept us laughing we were down near the Dead Sea and and um, some of them had gone in and sh and she was with her husband there where they come up to get some drinks and everybody was sitting around under this shaded place you know it's it sort of nice a little cooler some flat fans were blowing and people were ex getting their clothes back from the from the locker rooms where they had changed out to go into the Dead Sea and she said uh, she said, Ed, Ed, I'd like a, I like a smoothie, you know, a, a vegetable or a fruit smoothie. And he's a big old tall guy, just full of uh, vinegar. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, well, honey, I am your smoothie. <laughs> You'd have to know him to just crack me up. <laughs> uh, and he was something else. Uh, Everybody loved loved that brother. We had a lady though with us, and and you know we're all coming with different things to the Lord. We're all in different places, and one of our ladies, um, her husband, uh, had had not too long ago taken his life. The guy that I went with that invited me has a home for people with PS PTSD. And they have other things that that they're dealing with. But he has a few in his house, and he lets them come in and stay, and they can work, um, sort of like a boarding house. They pay money. Some of them have jobs. Um, and again, not all have PTSD, but uh, we have had, he has one coach there, middle, uh, middle school coach. But uh, most of these guys have gone through something, and so Buck, who's the, the music minister there at Northwood Temple, he... He prays with them, helps, helps them get back on their feet. And um, it's just a blessing to get to be with the folks. Different people are going through different things. I want to give you a scripture tonight, I believe, as it will, and we'll come back to Israel and talk some more, and, and, and maybe you'll have some questions here at the end if we have time. You can't. I, I have so many questions myself, and I've been I was studying while I was over there, and 
and studying when I get when I'm back, but it just put me on a, a whole different outlook about the Bible because it's just you know he said, "Well, I didn't know that. I've been there." Look at Isaiah. Let's go to chapter. Um, I was reading something about Israel. I think it's chapter forty-nine. I'm going to have to put this down. Look at Isaiah 49 and verse 13. This is a, a word for Israel specifically, but it says this. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, Zion, the people of God, city of God, Zion said, the Lord hath forsaken me. And my God hath forgotten me. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe all of us have, or every one of us has at one time or another. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, my God hath forgotten me. But then the Lord says, Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Amen. God will not forget you. And I say this is a specific word for Israel, yet we see uh, in the prophecy a word from God that really expresses his heart for those who call upon him and for those whom he calls he knows about us and he cares about us we need to know that god knows god doesn't there's not a thing about you and there's not a thing about me that god doesn't know the very hairs of our head heads are numbered while I, while we were at cana i saw little we, we, we had uh, wedding vows exchanged and people got to renew their vows there at Cana of Galilee in just a small room. It was really a wonderful service. But in front of my camera, I noticed as I was taking a picture of the people having their vows renewed and I saw little copper figurines or brass, they were, of little sparrows. And I thought, oh Lord, I'm so glad that you see every sparrow that falls to the ground and that you, you also see every one of us. You see me today here halfway around the world, halfway around my world. And I tell you, that's a good feeling. It's a good knowledge that God knows and he cares. Look what it says. Behold, I have graven thee. I have carved you in the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Well, he's talking about Jerusalem and those walls of that city. And you remember Jesus stood over that city and how, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft I would have gathered you unto me like a, a mama hen, like, like a, a mama hen, like a hen does her, her little ones, but you would not. You wouldn't come to me. The Lord loves us so much. He loves every individual. He loves every one of us. If I got anything out of that trip, I got, I got that. And I was so glad. Uh, I was so glad that you shared with us, Beth, about friendship. Just a couple of weeks ago, just a few weeks ago. And that was really a word from God to me and to, to everybody here. You know, we need to get out of our little space and begin to let that love of God just move on to others. We, we have the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? 
you have the love of God, that love of God that, I mean, God has gra engraved His people in the palm of His hand. That love of God, that same love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And my, we need to let it ooze out. You know, we just need to let it, let it out. I, I had to, I had to, I tell you, the Arabs, I was drawn to the Arabs and and I don't know if they were Palestinians or not, but I, you know me, I like to talk. And, and, but it just it wasn't that. It was just a compassion for those people that was there that did not have the word. And there are Arab Christians. I was with one Bedouin boy as we were, as we were getting ready to, to go. He, and the Bedouins usually, the Bedouins usually are out there uh, in tents. I mean, they... And this boy, I said, he was parking cars. Had him a nice black and white outfit on, you know, parking cars. At the, he, had, he was uptown for a Bedouin boy. <laughs> and you wouldn't know he was a Bedouin. And uh, a lot of them are getting, a lot of those are getting educated now. They have electricity. They got TVs in their tents. <laughs> Some little old shack out there on the hillside. There's a TV. <laughs> got electricity coming in, some of them. I spoke to him, though, and I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. He, he said, well, I, I'm Muslim. And I said, well, are you Palestinian? He said, no, Palestinian, bad. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to judge that. But, uh, but when I went through some of, when I saw some stuff written on some walls down in Bethlehem, I, I, I began to see, boy, these guys are bad guys down in here. They don't, uh, and I was glad I was a Christian. Glad I was with an with a Palestinian guide too though but um, he got on the bus there and we went to the field of the shepherds but a proud is you know I'm an Israeli and um, and uh, I'm a Muslim but I, as, as I, and I and he was one of the guys I hugged as I left I got to know him you know when you're there three days in Tiberias and you get you going in and out he was one of the guys we got to be buddies with and it just seemed like there was a kindred spirit and, and I had a little prayer with him before we left and I believe he was touched by God. The love of God is something else, isn't it? Oh, we, we got a God that loves us and cares about us. There's so much sadness and sorrow about us, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I came home and one of the first things, uh, you know, we hear about on the news is this, this bus where the, the teenagers and the, the bus driver was killed here on I-10 and just that's sadness, you know. And I had... Uh, but I, I had come in, uh, just got in Friday, and I, I knew I, I got a I got text while I was over there. Fred, would you help us in a funeral? And so I had a wake Sunday night, had a funeral Sun uh, Monday, and another funeral Tuesday. <laughs> and it was just it was some sadness, but it's so good to know that I got a God that that there's joy brings joy in our sadness, brings hope where there's there's hopelessness. Ray, I was coming down the Via Dolorosa, you know, where the place where Christ walk, walked. And there was a, but, but, but bent over, and not many people cared about him. was an old guy, and he couldn't see. He was a beggar, like you'd, like you'd think. And he would say, Father, Father. And he'd do that all day long. I guess he was calling for a Catholic priest or something. I don't know. Or he knew that word. He'd say, Father. And then his can was empty. And the camels even concerned me, you know. Some folks were riding on those pole camels, <laughs> you know. And 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 a hundred times, and now, now some of the guys in my group might get onto me for this, but but uh, but at least a hundred times a day, that pole camel he gets down to get let somebody get on him, then he gets back up, he gets to walk around, you know, he gets to walk around a little bit, and then he comes and sits down, and he lets another two hundred pounder get on him. And I'm being nice there now. I'm being nice. I love all the brothers and sisters I went with. But I know that camel has some, you know. Well, Fred, you know, he's a camel. He can handle it. But that's his, that's his day. I, it made me think of that verse out of Romans chapter 8. You know, the whole creation groans in travail, waiting for the appearance of the sons of God. 
The Lord is waiting for you and me. People are waiting. The creation is waiting. And I, I pray that God might work in our hearts to be that light to all the Gentiles, to all the Jews, too, as, they, as we have opportunity. There's nothing that can separate me from God's love. Nothing that can separate you from God's love. Let's look at that. Not going to go here too much longer. But let's look at it. Romans chapter 8. I just want to read it. I read it to some people yesterday. I just wanted them to know that they could trust God. They could count on Him. We got a God that will help us. He's concerned about our back aches. He's concerned about everything and sometimes the people that really are the most important in our lives and who can tell us the most might not be some big rabbi might not be you know some big name some celebrity god's not looking for that jesus wasn't a celebrity he was he didn't have a place to lay his head. He was just a nobody. But he's going to use you and me to have the love of God in our hearts. Oh, hallelujah. And nothing can separate us from that love. And while that love is in our heart, it is going to get out on people. It is going to move out there onto people. Oh, thank God. It's going to get, it, you don't have to worry about, about it. It's in your heart. It's in you. It's the love of God is in you. It's not some cheap love. It's the love of God. That's why God, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world. I'm not saying you're weak, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. I'm not saying you're foolish. But God wants to, He wants to use that which is nothing to bring to nothing the things that are. He wants to bring it down. And He will use us. He did it with Jesus. He's going to do it with you and me. We don't have to be somebody with rabbi or reverend on my name. I don't have to have just Fred, Christian. Amen. Christian. You got it inside of you. Great, great power inside of you. Boom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look. Look here. He that spared, verse 32, 832. He that spared not his own son. If he didn't spare his own son. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Now that's telling, that's the same thing that Romans 8 and 1 saying. There's no condemnation against you. Who shall lay anything to God's elect? You're not condemned, friend. You're set free. Glory to God. You're set free. You have power within you. It's the power of God. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Not just a, a, an animal. It's the Son of God who died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, and who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. He's making you got somebody praying for you uh, better than your mama. My mama was good. But there's somebody interceding for you right now. Jesus Christ at the right hand of God the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors. Everybody say more than conquerors. More than conquerors through him that loved us. Can we say this together? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, the, 
let's 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 be aware that God may be setting us up to be sitting or to be walking or to be being just where we need to be. I was uh, I'm going to close with this. I was sitting in in the airport there we were getting ready for gate 43 to make room for us there. That's a big airport, JFK. And I started talking to a guy beside me. And uh, I, I said I had it, the plane had stopped. People were getting their stuff out, but we still had to sit sit down for about 15 minutes before we could go on to the to the gate. And I said, you know, I might as well talk to this man here, find out a little bit about him, and um, you know, had a good flight, get any sleep? No, not much. But uh, I've done this before. And and I said, well, I'm. I'm, a, I'm from back in Alabama, Florida. I, I, sometimes I'd use Alabama, sometimes I'd use Florida. And um, anyway, he said, "Well, I've, I'm, I've been eight years in the Marine Corps. Just coming on home. My dad had been a Merchant Marine, so I thought I could talk a little bit more. Even though Merchant Marines and Marines are a lot different, you know. But 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 Dad was in World War II, and I'm glad he made it back. A lot of Merchant Marines didn't." Anyway, uh, we talked a little bit, and I, I, I prayed for God to bless him. And I say, I pray, God, I just say, I pray with my eyes open. I say, I pray God bless you and keep you on your way here as we go. And he, he shook my hand, and he, and he, and he did like, and he did like this. He put, put this thing in my hand, and, I, and I sort of, I sort of jumped back because I, you know, <laughs> I didn't, didn't know, and I, I didn't, I didn't look at this till I got to the house back at Fayetteville, and I had been sitting by somebody pretty important. Uh, for those kind of flights coming back from Israel anyway, it's probably the safest place I could have been. It said, it said Federal Air Marshal, <laughs> uh, United States of America. And, uh, and by the way, our eagle turns his head to the right. The Nazi eagle, I didn't see this, the Nazi eagle and the communist eagle turn their heads to the left. You have to check that out next time you're looking at some eagles. <laughs> But on this emblem, he's to the right. And I thought, Lord, you know, sometimes the people that are the best to sit by are the best to be with. They're right around us. We don't have to go very far to find who we need to make it in this life. You've given us people to bless us all around us. Some of us here have some aches and pains tonight. As we close, I'd just like for us to pray for one another. All right? Uh, my back was getting better until that last 12-hour flight. <laughs> but it's, it's getting better. But if you have a need in your family, physical need, or if you have a need in your body tonight, I just wonder if we might stand together, and, uh, if you're able to. And... Uh, and if you have a need in your back, especially, some of you have, have back aches. I know Beth does and Todd's that way. And anybody else need a brother here, Jimmy? I wonder if we could just stand together. And um, if that's not your need, we want to pray for a, Maybe you've got another need that you don't even need to talk about. But if you want to lift up your hand, you can. We want to pray for one another right now. Could, could we just gather? Somebody just put your hand on Todd's back. Just look around. And let's uh, pray for Sister Beth, too. Just put your hand. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Who you, we're believers. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder if, if you don't have somebody to pray for. Me. And let's just pray for one another. God, we want to thank you tonight. That you're a God who has, has us in the palm of your hand. And right now we just lift, we lift these in this house to you right now. In the name of Jesus, you who took our infirmities, you who bore our sicknesses on yourself. Lord, would you touch these bodies now in the name of Jesus? Would you touch these bodies? These are the temples. Your Bible says, the Word of God says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God dwells in us. Touch our bodies now in the name of Jesus. Touch the muscles and the fibers in our backs. 
Touch the discs and the nerves, Lord, in our bodies, we pray. And somebody's hip here, God, I pray in the name of Jesus for the healing to come there, Lord. Their knees, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And the feet, and the feet on the bottom of their feet. I pray in the name of Jesus, oh, for healing to touch. Oh, for your health and your healing to come into them. Oh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You're the God who knows our steps. You know our breath. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we want to lift our pastor, Pastor Rick Fountain, to you tonight. Thank you that you put him in my path. I was able to go by there, Lord. I just thank you that we were able to go by there Thursday on the way back, Lord. And I was able to see my aunt in a nursing home down in Sumter. I just ask you to touch her. But, Lord, we lift Tammy and we lift Rick to you right now. Let your healing salve, let your healing balm. Hallelujah. Let's just put our hands on our own chest for Rick right now and believe God. Father, let healing come. Oh, Lord, where those sutures are, Lord. Where those, those uh, arteries, Lord, those, uh, those vessels have been atta uh, attached. Oh, Lord, in a new place. Let there not be anything that would, that would become infected. Let not anything but your healing be there upon him now. And let him have peace. And let him have rest. Oh, God, give him rest. In the name of Jesus. There's a man I just happened to pray for yesterday. I want you to pray for him if you would. His name is Jerry Freeman. He's in Sacred Heart. And he's in intensive care. And uh, his carbon monoxide, he's been, on, he's been without oxygen. His carbon monoxide is is not getting out of his body would you just lift lift him right now i just want to lift him to the lord and pray for jerry right now in the name of jesus we thank you for him lord we ask you to touch him O lord jesus we thank you O lord we ask you to touch him now in jesus name let oxygen let oxygen Come into his, even heal, Lord, so that people would be amazed again at how you, you brought him back before. We ask you to bring him back now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pray for his son, Kyle. Oh, Lord, I pray for his wife right now in Jesus' name with those sisters that are there. We ask, oh, God, that you'd let them have faith in you. Let them understand that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let them really understand that. And we pray for your best for our brother Freeman there in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 Anybody else have anything on your mind before we leave the house tonight? Bless the Lord. Pastor John, did you have, want to close this or do you have anything you want to say? All right, let's give it up to Pastor Fred. Amen. Amen. I just want to uh, remind you this Sunday is a youth-led service, so uh, Pastor Derek will be speaking. Uh, youth will be leading the service. If you know any young people, please invite them to come out. Know some uh, young people in your neighborhood or you got some uh, nephews or cousins and stuff. Have them come out and, 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 and see our youth uh, Worship the Lord, see our, our youth uh, doing work for the Lord. And let's, let's show up in great numbers to encourage them and be praying for them. Amen. Amen. Let the peace of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest and abide and keep this your people now and forever. And Lord, we, we just ask you to lead us and guide us in the way we should go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You are dismissed.